Thank you for everything you've done. Of course, we ask the Lord you bless each person here. Let us make the right decisions for the right reason, dear Lord. And we ask that you just let us be a help to someone. Bless everybody. We love and praise you. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 October 8, 2013, from Madam Clerk, Tom Grove. Can I sign in, please? Two committees that I'd like to put in, in uh, 
Operation Building Committee and a Security Committee. There are three members that I've asked to serve on it, on each one. The only thing I can say is the two items, well actually the Building Committee, Mr. Poston has agreed that any building project or any suggestions of any project come to the committee first. That way you can get the details, you can find out exactly what it's all about. If you need to go look at something, you can go look at it. And then as a board, we can assist and recommend the director from that point. So, uh, so when the chairman, uh, we're going to try to have the committees where it's at 5 o'clock, if at all possible, before the meeting. If not, we'll work around it and have it uh, at other times. But uh, also on the security committee, one of the main purposes for it is to make our, it's not a safety committee, it's a security committee, to so make our buildings safer. There are some, several new ideas that I'm aware of that we could be working on that, uh, and we can utilize some people in the community that can actually help us with our building security and hopefully we can tackle to the ongoing efforts to get SROs in the elementary schools. So those are the two things we're doing. And one more thing. There's a lot of uh, discussion in recent events about drug screening employees. I'd like to say for the record that the Board of Education does not have that authority to do that. Uh, the state law is very clear on that, that, that you cannot do random drug testing. So the only way that could be changed is if your state legislators change the law. So I'd just like you know, a lot of people think as a board of education we have the power to do that. We don't. But does the superintendent have the power? No. No. And, uh, and I've even, I even came up with the idea of maybe if we did a volunteer drug screening and everybody would raise their hand and say, well, we do that. Well, I was told in the legal community today that that can't even be done. Because what that does is if people that don't take it, that shows an effort even if there isn't any drug use, that that would be kind of saying that because it didn't take the test, that would be a possibility that they would do. So, so just want to make that clear because I had several calls that uh, wondered why we don't do that at the Board of Education. So that, that pretty much tells you why. And uh, we do have a drug policy in our manual, but I think that uh, that's kind of can't get far with it based on what, what they're telling you from the legal commission. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there. Other than that, that's all I have, Mr. Dineker. Well, the, uh, all the elementary schools, K through eight, have been involved in uh, educational development with the Journeys textbook related to Common Core. That's a big ongoing thing today, uh, this late. Worked on day and got it organized. That was a big event all day in our system. We've been working on Common Core things ever since school was started, ensuring up uh, Common Core in CTE classes, in our core classes, English, Math, Science, Social Studies, and so on. So that's an ongoing effort. And then I'd just like to say, Mr. Post, and he's been under the weather since about Thursday, Friday last week, kind of like complications from maybe going to the dentist, his flu shot, you know, and taking some high power medicine. So hopefully in a few days he'll get better and uh, get back with us. Does any member have any questions for Mr. Knight? Uh, yes, I've been reading about this Common Core. A lot of the states are just uh, pulling out of the Common Core program. Uh, what about Tennessee? Are we locked in pretty tight, or are we one of those that's uh, uh, discussing jumping out, or what, what's going on? I can't speak for the governor's office and Commissioner Huffman. I think they're locked in tight. Well, if they are, we are. And uh, <laughs> now you got to realize some positives are coming from that. The uh, evaluation program, I think, is a good instrument. It needs cleaned up a little bit. That gets administrators in uh, classrooms, principals in classrooms more often. Common Core is basically making for a full circle from where we talked about 34 years ago. 
I don't particularly care about I think the testing parts went a little bit overboard because it takes so much time and money. But yes, Mr. Lawson, I think we're locked in. Any other questions? Let's move on. Mr. Marlowe? Sir, um, again with the monthly financial reports for the period ending August 31st, 2013. Cash for the trustee and the general public school fund, $5.3 million, almost $9.4 million. Over a couple of pages, you see your revenue production. We have realized 10%, 3.75 of the three million, or $37.7 million budget. As you can see, we have no property tax payment yet. Uh, hopefully, it will come again in the month of October. The notices have been sent back from the state, so we should start seeing some collection there. Um, in the expenditure section, 15%, so 5% over in expenditures compared to revenue, but that's because of the uh, no taxes at this point in time. Um, the next fund is the total private school fund. We have just over $500,000, 515. You know, with 500000 we put in there our own money, so 15000 up in that regard as the cash balance. The revenue is perfect balance with the expenditures, 8.3% of realization versus 8.4% of realization. That's exactly what you should see, a little 42 fund in balance. Then the final fund, the cashier fund, cash trustee, $422,000 possibly. Uh, as you see, the fund is a fund balance, which fund balance there is $700,000. Spend a lot of money to start school year before you start recouping it. And the revenues and expenditures compared to each other show that 9% versus 13% is a comparison. Um, one month's worth of data, a few weeks actually, a couple weeks, no more. We'll get the next set of reports uh, from our estimates, which should be all right. We'll know from this fund as we go forward. As you know, with all the changes in the food to be sold, been difficult to measure and guess at the uh, participation points. Uh, we'll know once we get to a couple months and see exactly where we are. Um, the funds overall look like they're supposed to. Um, any questions over these? I'll answer them. If not, the motion to approve them all. Any questions for Mr. Moore? If not, we can entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. 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 Are they ready? 
they finished them up today. All right, well, I'll let them know tomorrow. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. But uh, we're still in the uh, final part because the uh, assumed estimates versus the production at this point on so about three hundred dollar mark across all and all twelve sites are on board now. <coughs> you guys saw you just put on the on TVA rebates for the three kilo kilo sites to get those ones in their hands. That looks good. Anything else? Uh, let's move on. Update from Faith Palmer regarding the individual school activity funds. Any questions for Mrs. Palmer? Thank you. Thank you. Items for action. Consider approving the following courses at Campbell County High School as honors and AP classes for the 2013-2014 school year. The honors classes will be English 1, 2, and 3, Biology 1, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Algebra 3, Geometry and Physics. One AP class, physics AP class. Any motion to approve this? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I would just like to have a discussion. A discussion. The honors classes will be weighted a half a point. The AP class be weighted a full point. Also, the each teacher in the honors classes has to submit a syllabus. The AP class has to submit a syllabus to the college. <coughs> so I think Ms. Wither's got it in line. Teachers are already in place. Would like to add uh, this needs to go into effect at the beginning of this school year. So uh, we need to have the motion. Mr. Matterford, could you have anything to add to that? Um, overlook? AP classes, all of those teachers have to go to uh, two or three weeks training to make sure that the rigor of those classrooms meet the expectations of the colleges. Uh, if you make a four or five on your AP class, that allows you so many college credits to be transferred and to your transfer. So it's very possible. Mr. Matter for when they take these uh, like English boards as an AP class, how well do those kids in English have you ever do anything to determine how well they then do on their uh, ACT score in English? In other words, what I'm saying is if you pass an AP class in English, you ought to score pretty high on the ACT test if it's really being taught at that level. To pass an AP class, you're correct, Mr. Lawson. It'll correlate to that ACT score. And uh, that would be something good for us to do this year, to take those. Most seniors don't take the ACT. Most juniors. They take it in their junior year. Uh, but I guarantee you have to score fairly high on your ACT to pass an uh, AP class with a four or a five because the rigor is. Well, we can a, look at that for Yeah, you. that's one of the best ways to evaluate if it's doing what it's set up to do. If you set it up and call it an AP class, you give everybody an A and you don't work very hard, why well, you've got a credit, but you've not got to. And that may not be happening, but I always like to see if we approve these programs, we evaluate them and see if they're doing what we set them up to do. We can look at those. At the end of this semester, I, I'd like to see that at, at the end of the year, see how we're doing on that. When you say that uh, the uh, honors class is a half a point, the AP class is a whole point, do they have to get so many points to do something? Mr. Wilson, uh, that goes toward their GPA. Okay. That uh, has nothing. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, just, just trying to figure out what the points was for. Okay. When, when these youngsters, these students, compete for scholarships, a 4.0 doesn't yeah. cut it. Right. If you want to really compete, you've got to be up to 4.5 right on that. So then this gives them an extra. <laughs> this gives them the opportunity okay. to be more competitive for scholarships sure. that other counties are doing. We really have some to get scholarships. How many AP classes do we have? 
Well, well now, of course, you laugh at what the physics, but uh, we have an AP English history and uh, knowledge. No math. I don't think so, Mr. Wilson. I'll check. You guys have been adding one or two of you. But I'll get I'll give you Miss Wheeler and we'll just give you a list. The well, reason I ask they are we are behind other schools with these AP courses. I've checked with some other schools and some of them got twelve, some of them got fifteen, some of them got twenty five. Uh, I just not that we're doing bad, I just wanted to know if you uh, you're doing a good job with you. Any further discussion? If not, remember to raise the vote, catch your vote. Any member wish to change the vote? I have to do a vote. Discuss and take any necessary action regarding virtual schools. Let me just uh, make a, a point up front. I had a talk with Kathleen Earhart, the Deputy Commissioner of Education, at our workshop. I asked her if she would have us an answer on the virtual schools by this meeting so we could tell this board what the state's going to do. They basically have told Mr. Poston that you can have your virtual schools, but you can't enroll kids from across the state. And we'll probably send you a letter out in January. She indicated to me that she wasn't a fan of it, that they had had failure at Union County. I, I just really believe that that they don't want it to exist, and I don't think it's going to be a good thing for Camel County at this stage. I voted for it, but from what I hear now on the performance end of it, when they stood up here in front of us and told us that they expected Union County to be improving, that didn't happen. And although they will tell you now that they are struggling real hard to try to get a handle on it. So I just wanted to give you that information if there's any action you all want to take for the virtual schools, I'll entertain a motion or get in. I want to make a motion we withdraw all claims toward the virtual school. Have a motion. Get about it. Is there a second? I'd like to second, but would Bill, are we okay with that? We've been a long student. Mr. Marlowe, we'll open this up. We've got a motion and a second. I don't know about that, but that's why I was getting ready to say the same thing. You know, the board voted for us to sign the contract, right. and we have signed the contract, and they've signed the contract. Obviously, nothing's been done because the state hasn't approved the, the item, but we've entered a contract now. Whether we can... Don't we have the authority to withdraw from the contract? There, there's a cancellation clause in there. Um, I can't remember sitting here specifically what those are, but there's like so much notice, so you can't do it like today well, but you could take this action and then proceed with making the appropriate notice and of course we can tell our attorney to do his part in withdrawing from the contract yes and at least that shows to them that we're not happy with the way they won't give us an answer they keep putting it off they, behind the scenes they tell us or they don't tell us they indicate they're not for it and we got to think about what's best for our students I understand the hardship i don't think just enrolling just there's other programs i talked to mr Ms. Reynolds this evening, she said there was an opinion in the Attorney General's office that they're supposed to rule on, uh, but then she also admitted that even if it comes down that it was in favor of K-12, they still don't have to approve it. The Department of Education doesn't have to, the Board of Education doesn't have to approve it. So there's, there's where we find ourselves. Chairman, sure, well, my concern is if they don't, if the state doesn't allow us to do it statewide, that will do the the purpose anyways. Yes. I mean, we're going to be hurting ourselves. You know, the, the goal was to offer this program to students statewide, including our district. But if they're going to hamstring us to just our district, then we would really be doing the service for ourselves. I mean, then we, then we would be going in the whole side. You know, if, if that's how they're going to go, you know, that's kind of how the state's leaning. I had a conversation with Mr. Poston this 
morning and he he doesn't feel very good about it either this day. Any more discussion? If not, let's proceed to vote. Cast your vote. <coughs> Voting yes to withdraw from the contract. Any member wish to change the vote? Rebuild Mark, the vote. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rebuild the vote, please. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Creekmore, yes. Hill, yes. Lawson, yes. Warwick, yes. Parker, yes. Wilson, yes. Motion. Chairman, are you guys going on your letterhead since up that the, the Dale's office tell them to yes. notify them and be sure, sure that we get the coffee carpet yeah. so that uh, I have for my time too? Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Consider approving County Head Board of Education annual agenda. In the attachments, we have an annual agenda proposed. This can be a working document, but I do think the board before have had it. We kind of kind of condensed it a little bit uh, but it does give us some of the things that you can go to and look at in that month and see that we will be taking that up so that we don't forget it or what happens so i'll entertain a motion i would like oh okay no. i'll make a motion to accept is there a second any discussion yes i would like to put in there that we recognize all the kids who got a scholarship in the month of may we had our first kid get a scholarship in bass fishing this past week he signed with ryan college down in dayton tennessee for bass fishing that was our first one and uh, i think we need to recognize all of them you know to get a scholarship to get a scholarship i like to want that <laughs> yeah me too but I think we need to recognize uh, all the kids who get scholarships and you know, know how we are. Any, anything else? Any ideas for the annual agenda? If not, let's proceed to vote. Cast the vote. Any member wish to change the vote? If not, have a part of the bill vote. Miller, yes. Burge, yes. Collins, yes. Yes, Hill, yes, Lawson, yes, Warwick, yes, Parker, yes, Wilson, yes, motion, yes. Thank you. Items for discussion, discuss school nurses. Uh, Mr. Poston was going to talk about this tonight. I don't want to be talking to you about that. But uh, I think we've had a need for school nurses. There have been some uh, talk in the past about funding additional, or at least some. Do you have anything on that, Mr. Nelson? I can give you a rundown. Uh, nurse student ratio. Campbell County High School is a one to thirteen ratio. Uh, Valley View and Lavala Middle is served by Diana Davis, a one to nine ratio. Jellico High, Jellico Elementary, Cum Valley, White Oak is served by a half time nurse of a one to fourteen ratio. Leanne Hall serves Jacksboro Elementary and uh, is the alternative school with about a 1 to 6 ratio. Amy Leach serves Lafollette Elementary, Wynn Elementary with a 1 to 9 ratio. And Emma Nolan serves uh, Carroll and Jacksboro Middle with a 1 to 11 ratio. That helps you out. Could you explain a little more the ratio? The ratio is based on uh, the number of students in the school uh, divided and enforced by the one nurse. So uh, that's kind of what they, that gives you an idea of about what they serve. Campbell County has 1,300 students. Valley View and Fall Middle together, 926. Uh, Jellico High, Jellico Elementary, Hill Valley and White Oak has 713 students. Which of the ones uh, are full time. The, all are full time nurses except Sherry Lancaster at Jellico High, Jellico Elementary, Elk Valley, and White Oak. Uh, Sharon Shepard, Diana Davis, and Sherry Lancaster, Emma Nolan are RNs, and we have uh, two uh, 
two L pens. Mr. Colston expressed to me that he was in the process of trying to find some additional funding. Hopefully he can. Larry, how many students do you say for the high school? 1,300? About at 1,300. How many nurses do you have? One. That's one for 1,300, not one for 1,300. Well, it's, you know, we just tried to get that down to a number where you could relate it there. Okay. So basically, we have one nurse, and we have some that are traveling from school to school, right? Yes. Were there any funding you pull up from other than our general funds? Any money? Your budget back up, Bruce? No. no. Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> But I understand we've got a part-time nurse for five schools over there. Is that right? That's what I thought. And I, there was an incident at Jacksburg Elementary a little while ago that happened right at start time, and the nurse didn't come in until 10 o'clock. Maybe they understand why. But they had a pretty serious situation there. You know, it's, it's just, I think, a very needed thing that these schools have a nurse. So May I say something, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Collins, correct. Uh, Jellicoe Elementary, Jellicoe High School, two schools, Miss Lancaster, go to. Uh, White Oak, Mount Valley, doesn't have a nurse. Okay, well, we've, we've recognized the need, so hopefully, Mr. Post, I'm okay. sure he's worth looking at that. So uh, we'll move on. Discuss coordinated school health program. Mr. Bruce, I have a few questions. I put this on here if you can come forward. Uh, I know you've just been in this job for a little while. What is the grant amount? $100,000. $100,000. How much of that $100,000 goes to salaries? Uh, Mr. Miller, that would be something that you have to... So Mr. Barlow, have any idea on Mr. Barlow on that? No, but I'm going to say the majority of the salaries and benefits. Do you have any idea how much money after that you have to work with out of that? Yeah, I know that uh, I took uh, approximately 13000 and put back into the schools. Okay, what, 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 what did you use for that 13000 Where did it go? Uh, Mr. Miller, what we did... Uh, this year, for the first time, we are offering mini grants to every school, a thousand dollar mini grant, and uh, the schools have accepted it really well. What it does, instead of me buying stuff and delivering it to them, say, "Here, this is what you got," I'm giving them an opportunity to say, "Hey, Johnny, this is how we'd like to spend our thousand dollars." Oh, I can't think of Phil Phyllis Klinger, I think it is. She has been going to schools with me and, and talking with them, and we're looking at possibly taking that thousand and using it to pay the difference to get a bigger grant. Say, for example, a ten percent matching fund. Uh, give an example: uh, Campbell County High School is looking at taking their money and putting a walking trail in. Uh, La Follette Middle School was going to take their money and do something for their staff. Uh, Elk Valley is wanting to do a uh, garden. You know, so we've got a wide variety, but what we're doing is we're actually going into every school and giving them the opportunity to, to you know, to spend the money the way they want to spend it. Does the grant have criteria as to how you're supposed to spend the money? Yes, it does. Yeah, it has. How much of it? It says go for salary. How much of the school to have? Uh, my, it a, a lot of a lot of other systems, <laughs> like Mr. Morrow said, the majority of the money goes for salaries. Coordinated school health person is a person that goes out and coordinates with other groups. For example, Jacksboro Elementary needs something, uh, say some physical P equipment. And uh, they call me and says, hey, Johnny, can you help us? Then, hey, it's my responsibility, my goal is to go out and see if I can solicit funds to help, you know, help them get those. Okay, I noticed in some of the qualifications for the coordinated school health coordinator, is that they're supposed to create these school health councils? Yes. These health healthy teams. School teams. Yes. Can you explain what that is? Well, that what was they a, do. I'm just 
that was one of the things with the thousand dollars is the fact that we're going in and we're putting together healthy teams and that's uh, principals, assistant principals, PE teachers, uh, SROs, uh, someone out of food service, uh, parents, students. Uh, matter of fact, the, uh, the president uh, and, and what we've done at each school, we've formed a little corporation. We have a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. The principal and vice principal cannot serve on those committees, which gives the uh, you know those people the opportunity to actually know what they want to spend the money for. And in saying that, uh, at Elk Valley, the president is one of his students. So okay, basically, you just is a lot of nutrition. You you work on how to eat. Well, I'm hey, I'm just trying to learn. There's eight components. I like to give them to you. Uh, it's uh, Back to here, it's uh, comprehensive health education as far as going in and educating. Okay, physical education, physical activity. Uh, for example, the walking trail, Kim Ken High School, getting, getting more kids involved. Uh, health services, uh, nutrition. And I can I say this, Miss Vicky has, but she's a she has helped me tremendously. And then the fact that what we've done is we have a brown bag program now for breakfast. Kids that come in late, instead of having to go straight to class, they can actually stop by the cafeteria and eat breakfast, you know, pick up the breakfast and, and go, and the principals have worked with us on that. So, but like I said, hey, I wanna commend her because hey, she's, she's helped tremendously with it. Uh, health promotion for the staff, uh, counseling and psychological services, uh, healthy school environment, and uh, parent community involvement. Uh, went for the first time to a uh, the health council, Campbell County Health Council. We're involved with that now. Uh, meeting tomorrow at the uh, health department. Uh, the tobacco settlement. We're looking at possibly nineteen to twenty-one thousand dollars, you know, per year, and we're hoping to take some of that money and, and educate our students, you know, put it back in the schools. You just. Uh used, uh, I'm sure this money came out of that grant, $7,000 to administer a BMI, yes. which is body mass index. And my question to you is, is could, could the school nurses or anybody in the school department could have done that or? That would be supplanting the funds. I, you know, I, I checked with that. Day of, you couldn't have paid them? After hours? Yeah. Now, matter of fact, uh, I offered it to one, and she didn't want to do it. So that, and what we did is we took it and uh, gave it to a retired teacher, working two hours a day. What's that test consist of? What do they do? Uh, that's the height, weight. Uh, they'll do blood pressure. Uh, we're set up. Uh, Miss Campbell, Miss Lay, and I met with uh, a gentleman from Lions Club. Uh, oh, was it last Friday? And uh, the RTIs in the schools says, what, tour level two, Linda, that you have to have a vision and hearing all students before they can go to the next, to the next tier. We're looking at going in when we do our BMIs, instead of just doing the kids that have turned in a form, being able to do BMIs on those, but do vision and hearing on all the students. Therefore, there's no delay. If they want to move to tier level two, we've got a vision and hearing screening in place. Very good. Does anybody else have any questions? I don't know with BMIs, you get those fat kids, what you do to get them to slim down. Just lost. That's, that's what, what a BMI <laughs> test is, sister fat. <laughs> You're calling it, what do you do with them? Just lost. We, hopefully we can put activities and stuff within the school that'll help them. Oh. You need to do that with something. You're talking about that counseling. Teachers, how do you all counseling teachers? We hey, um, give them a BMI test too? No, I, but I will say this. Amy Olson, who's with Ridgeview, is part of our district safety team. And she has uh, told us any time that we need a counselor or counselors, to just give her a call and she'd, she'd have them there for us. Well, that one slipped through the cracks, didn't you? I would like to see what the the uh, the, group, the schools what they did purchase with, with the grants. 
I would like to see what they're doing. Sure, I'd be more than happy to. Josh. Like I said, uh, I've not been able to get to all the schools yet. We're still working on it. Uh, some of them I'll be going back for the second time after after fall break. But hey, I, hey, listen, I was impressed. I really was because you know I thought okay, they'll just take one of these equipment and stuff. Nah, these people. Hey, there. Do you do most of your time? Do you dedicate most of your time to going next to Mr. Miller? On the grant says that my time has to be spent towards coordinate school health. Okay. So they don't have you doing other things. You're, you're focusing on coordinate school health. <laughs> uh, Mr. Miller, well, my grant says that I have to spend well, my time doing coordinate school health. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. Discuss legal matters. Um, there was a letter that Mr. Cantrell was to send down. I'm not sure whether you all have received okay. They have. Okay. Um, there were three cases that he wanted to discuss, and those were discussed in detail in that letter. Um, obviously, we can't kind of discuss these outside of executive session, but if you all do have questions, we can talk about that in an executive session. But he, he, he was pretty comprehensive in discussing those. Um, also, the issue involving the county commission, um, the way that it all panned out, and I think he discussed, discussed it in his letter as well. Um, what was done was Dale and um, the attorney for the county went and looked at the resolution itself. Um, and the resolution did state that, that one of the members needs to be the chairman of the school board, um, but it's not a binding resolution, which means that effectively, if they voted to rescind the resolution, they could do so at their whim. Um, they didn't jump through the appropriate hoops, so obviously it was, from our perspective, uh, not done in the appropriate way, uh, but any lawsuit involving would just result in them just taking the appropriate step of rescinding and there's nothing that can be done to, to fix that. Um, that being said, the board certainly has every right to vote to make a formal request for them to reconsider such uh, rescission. and. Um, and present that to the county commission and go forward. So, um, so those are the two main legal issues that that he wanted me to, to address. And if y'all have any questions, I'll give my best answer. Does anybody have anything about the uh, board chairman serving on the other committee? I think that they may be uh, a movement to reconsider the vote. I don't know that to be sure, but uh, because they told me that they would want to consider it. Hopefully, it, one way or the other, you vote the resolution out. Of course, it's hard for me to sit here and talk objectively about this when I know for a fact that it has a lot to do with me actually serving on that committee. But I do think that with the effort that was made two years ago, and when you put all that writing in a resolution, that it's important for the Board of Education's chairman to sit on that committee because of all the payroll and the amount of budget that the school handles, but yet you're not willing to accept who the board puts in as chairman. I think it's just another example of how politics run in this county sometimes. But, uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I'll speak up. Uh, I think the board chairman ought to be on that hill, That's why the resolution two years ago, irrespective of who he is. That's how I've got to be, and that's how I feel now. So I would hope that. Consider that. We'll see where it goes. Can that community be increased? Are you sure about that? I thought Mr. Coker said that it could be. We put as many as we want to. No, that's not on there. Like the uh, non statutory committees, uh, environmental and whatever, we can have as many as they want. They have five to do them. We can do seven. Actually, they have one community that has all 15 in the one, but it's fine. But uh, as the best candidate said, we need non discretionary members for three non discretionary uh, mayor, school superintendent, and four at the choice of three. I think that uh, we'll just see what the commission decides to do at the next meeting. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that they have their own resolution that they should follow by. If they choose not to, I think they should vote it out. 
and then we can do what we want to do in the future with the part of it or not. But I do think the board chairman should sit on it. It was good two years ago. I think it was good last year. And I think it would be good two years from now, no matter who. I, I echo Mr. Parker's sentiments 100%. Other than that, anybody got anything else? Mr. Parker, well, what percent of the uh, total county budget is uh, is the school department's budget? About 50, 55 percent. What percent? 55. 55. 55. Yeah, more than half. That's what I thought. That's why I was thinking. That. I realized that what he's talking about here. This is a, this is just up at the discretion of the county commission. <clears throat> they set up that committee and they can have on their committee whoever they want to have on there. And we can squawk about it if we want to. It's really up to them. But the reason I think it, it's a good idea is the percentage of money that comes to the school department would indicate that we need some representation on there and possibly need more representation uh, if a department that's got to. Forty million dollars or forty-six million dollars, and a department that's got uh, three million dollars. You'd think that the one with forty-six or uh, fifty million would uh, have a little more clout on that committee than someone else. But that's uh, that's that totally up to the commission, and we understand that. And all we can do is just holler and they can laugh at you if you want to, or they can accept you. So that's where we're at. I just want to say that I thought with that much money, it appears to me that uh, we would probably uh, uh, more, it would warrant having uh, more representation than we probably yes. have. That's all First and foremost, to be on there. Anything else? Thank you. All right, recognize school board members. Mr. Collins. I have a question for Ms. Campbell. Linda? Linda. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> You know, I talked to you a week before last, I think, about checking that special ed person up there or testing for special ed. Yeah. We've done anything about that yet. Okay. Just because he is he's out of control. Okay. Whether we need to do something with him, put him in jail or whatever. <laughs> I just want to say congratulations to what you said earlier to the Cougars. We're going to be proud of them. Yeah. Proud for coaches, proud for mostly the guys who played. They played real hard and sincerity this year. And, uh, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be uh, in the middle of this. Mr. Burns, that would be the first item on your agenda. 
and then uh, pack you some other bags if you have to talk with uh, Jason or Steve. And, uh, we can uh, write a letter. I can write a letter that says, okay, uh, a load of tops will cost X amount of dollars, and we can give them that, and they can take it off their taxes, save you money, and I don't think you might be out to get the truck to you. So I want to let you know. All right, very good. Okay, motion to adjourn.